Hello everyone, um, so today we are here at uh, one of the surgeon farms that we work with. I'm from Imperial Heritage Caviar um, and today we are in uh, the Lombardy region in Italy, um, in the region Calvisano and um, yeah as you can see over here um, this is a surgeon farm one of the oldest in the world it's quite special and um, they work in a very traditional and unique way so um, what they do over here is they only use natural spring water from the mountains so source water um, to fill the basins really important because the quality of the water it's really top quality so it's really pure really natural um, they never recycle the water, they always um, on a continuous basis um, refresh the water, so really important. There is a continuous stream of water, a continuous flow of water um, going through the basins. And um, another important element is that at the bottom of the basins, as you can see over here, um, you have rocks um, and boulders and pebbles. And between the pebbles, you will find small natural org organisms that are developing, um, like in nature, uh, like in the natural habitat of the surgeon. Um, for example, like crustaceans, um, crustacea, um, small lobsters, small crabs, uh, olks, um, all natural organisms. And um, these are really important for the taste of the caviar because most of the surgeons are really bottom feeders and that's important um, because for example if your bottom like this um, is existing out of, of rocks and boulders the surgeons will find their food between the rocks and boulders and that's what's going to determine the real flavor and the taste of the caviar like it was in the wild but then farmed over here in Italy. Yeah, most of the surgeons are bottom feeders but um, the beluga is a bit special. Um, most of the surgeons have their mouth at the bottom searching at the bottom for their food but the beluga has his mouth in front of his nose and that's a bit different because he's a real carnivore he's really going to search for a little bit more bigger fish um, to eat um, so the beluga is a bit different but most of the other surgeons are really searching their food at the bottom of, of the lakes or the basins so what you can see here actually are seven different species of surgeon in one basin. It's quite unique to see them all together. Um, and the funny thing is that you can see them um, search for food. At the bottom you see the, the stones, the boulders, the pebbles. And between the stones and pebbles they will look for food. And as you can see, most of them are taking the stones into their mouth, they're really cleaning them and spitting them out again. Um, so this one is really cleaning cleaning all the pebbles. Um, the really big one over there, um, it's the transmontanus, it's the white sturgeon. Um, it's a white sturgeon because it has a white belly and white meat. Then over there you have a smaller sturgeon with a really long nose, that's the Sevruga. Um, also a really special sturgeon, really difficult to breed. Um, there are only a couple of farms around the world that, that really um, started breeding Sevruga because it's a really sensitive fish, so it's difficult to breed. Then um, the one over there you also have the Osietra, um, Siberian sturgeon. Surgeon, also the Naikari and also a Beluga. Um, if the fish are between two and three years old, um, they are in the smaller basins because um, they do not know the gender yet. And from the moment that they know the gender, they will separate the males and the females. And from that moment on, the, uh, the surgeons, the female surgeons, will go to the large basins with the bottom of rocks and pebbles. Always source water yeah. from a well, about 80 meters underground, big wells. Actually, the melting water from the Alps. 
same quality as uh, the waters you have here at uh, San Pellegrino and Bergamo and, 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 and these waters are the same quality also underground. So actually, when there is extraction of the fish, we take out the eggs. The eggs are washed with cold water. And then we push them through a sieve to actually have all the eggs separate. And at the end we are gonna pick out the last last things which are not correct. We have a pure caviar without salt. So here the caviar comes out. It will be weighed every individual batch. So we have uh, every fish has its own number. So we can trace it back. We never mix the. You can see these were two fish that they were almost. Uh, they were born the same time. They were grown the same time. They were now processed. But look at the colors and the size. Different. So they cannot mix. So every batch is uh, made individually. And after selecting the quality, we are gonna salt the caviar. And immediately afterwards, the caviar goes into the jars. So this is the caviar prepared with salt, mallow salt. Um, what you are now going to do is to put the caviar in the big mother tins, the original tins, the traditional tins. And um, the way that they pack the caviar is in the shape of a pyramid. Um, it's a traditional way of packing the caviar. What they're going to do is they put on the, the, the lid of the tin and then they're going to put it over there such that almost the weight that is in the tin is going to put, be put on top of the tin as well and in this way the tin is going, the, the lid is going down the air will come out and the caviar arrives in a natural bake room and afterwards we're going to be a red rubber band around the tin such that the caviar is really in a natural vacuum and that the maturation process can start. So in this way the caviar is going to mature a couple of months and afterwards we are going to select which caviar is going to be taken back to Belgium. We call this the mother jars, actually the, the, the big jars, in which we gonna mature. affiner le caviar, to, to mature the caviar. Half a kilo, we are actually the only ones who have half kilos, because we created the box. You have one kilo, one kilo eight. These are the traditional ones, the ones you saw in the production. So, Ossietra. Siberian and the Transmontanus, the three most important caviars we have. Uh, for instance, the Transmontanus is the caviar mm -hmm. you have now. Uh, Siberian, traditional fish, originally uh, found in uh, Baikal, uh, the lake of Baikal near Irku Irkutsk, Mongolia. Very large, cold lake. 
Ossetra, Gulden Steti, Russian sturgeon, also typical, typical uh, sturgeon for Iran and uh, Russia, but now farmed all over the world and certainly in top quality here in uh, Piemonte. Transmontanus, Transmontanus originally, originally uh, the white sturgeon, uh, which is uh, found also in California, mostly in California, lakes over there, and now very successfully uh, bred in uh, Italy, Lombardia. We're going to open the jar. So, so actually this is the first time that we open the tin after it was packed um, after the harvest. So when we're going to taste, we're going to taste inside of the jar. Why inside of the jar? To have the pure taste, the finest taste after maturization and to avoid any oxidation of the outside of the tin. So I'm going to put it in the tin. If you look at the egg, you will see the eye of the egg on the top surface. That means that the caviar is very nice, matured, at the right moment. They are not only uh, breeding uh, sturgeons for caviar, but also the meat of the sturgeon is used, smoked, fresh. And uh, this is one of the biggest slicing uh, companies uh, in Italy, actually the biggest. They slice the sturgeon, they slice tuna, they slice swordfish, 